We started these mighty conversations two decades ago, and there's no time like the present to talk about the things that are important. I'm Commissioner Khadijah, and this is the Mighty Six Conversations. Welcome to another exciting episode of Mighty Six Conversations. I'm your host, Vice Chair Khadijah Abdul Rahman. On today's show, we will spotlight the great work of the Fortitude Educational and Cultural Development Center and talk about its coveted Pinnacle Awards, which turns 25 this year. This prestigious award celebrates the best of the best of persons making life-changing achievements in technology and business, as well as those making outstanding contributions in the arts, sciences, and the community. It is truly an honor to have joining us today the president of the FECDC Board of Directors, Ms. Minnie Miller. Welcome. Before we get started, I want to take a personal privilege and thank you and your organization for selecting me to become a recipient of this year's Pinnacle Leadership Award. It is truly a great honor. And we are so excited that you accepted the honor because we are so proud of the work that you are doing in the community. And that is one of the reasons why we look out, search out to find recipients such as you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, I wanna take this moment to help our viewers learn more about the significance of the award. Um, you've already shared with us a little information um, about the Pinnacle Award, but can you uh, kind of tell our viewing audience how it came to be? Sure, um, well it's really twofold. Okay. This was a way that our foundation, the, F the Fortitude Education and Culture Development Center Incorporated could recognize the outstanding work that community members are doing and also, it was a way that we could use this as a way to for funding. As you know, we have to fund the programs that we do in the community as we service the youth mm -hmm. and our senior citizens. So we help provide services with them. And as we were thinking about how can we get funded, how can we do this? And of course, we do do some collaboration with other partners, such as ours, nonprofit, but that's how we came up with this idea of having the Pinnacle Awards Luncheon. And we are so excited about this year because we will be celebrating 25 years of providing this type of award, of recognizing the good work that our community leaders are doing. Well, I tell you, um, 25 years says a lot. Yes. And what I, I'm most excited about is that when I was able to reach some of the scholarship recipients, mm -hmm. those were such beautiful and smart young men and women. And, you know, the award, I'm so proud to receive the award because you all are very diligent. Uh, it says a lot to be a recipient of it. But what I learned this time around, the scholarship recipients all have a great story. Um, in terms of the scholarship recipients, is it stringent? Uh, how do you all go about picking the individuals that win the scholarships? Well, first of all, this, I'm so excited to share this because our scholarships have really grown. Mm -hmm. I remember at the beginning, we started out with giving one, and then we moved to two, and now we are up to about 12 or 13, wow. and it continuously to grow. But um, it is open to, in our, to the, all the schools around, in the South Fulton area, because that's the service area we 
we mainly focus on, okay. but we have opened it up to metropolitan Atlanta. Okay. And I believe this year, which you will hear more about it when you speak with our scholarship chair, which is on the show following me, mm -hmm. um, but she was going to go into it a little bit more detail, but that is another great, I guess we, what we call, that we are so proud of. Because you know, it's about our, the seniors, like me, helping the seniors out. <laughs> and then it's also about a, awarding our young people mm -hmm. because they are our future. And so we want them to know that if you are in school and doing a great job, we are going to help you. We, and they have sent us back such wonderful notes thanking us. And what has been so also so impressive has been that many of our board members have decided that they want to give a scholarship in honor of they you know lost a, a family member mm -hmm. um, and just just doing it. So it is continuing to grow and I know board member Harris is going to talk to you more and give you more details about it. But when we look and think about our vision to help our youth and to help our senior citizen, I, I just think the scholarship program is a great example of that. And you will see on June 29th, you will see them there and they are so excited about it. And we also, it, it's just going to be something that you're going to really, really enjoy. Well, I had the honor of uh, joining it last year. And Great. I tell you, I was <laughs> so excited to sit there and watch the stories and watch the scholarship recipients and their families. Now, just for the sake of conversation, could you share with some of our listening audience previous honorees of oh, the Pinnacle Award? Yes, we have, as you know, <laughs> <laughs> We are so excited about this year's lineup. I mean, and so what we have, but some of the previous honorees, we've had people like um, Senator Warnock. Okay. Yes, we have had uh, school board members, Fulton County School Board member, Linda Bryant. Okay. Um, we've had um, people like, and it doesn't always have to be, we had pastors, mm -hmm. we've had Reverend Kimbrough. Okay. We've had, um, the, uh, I can think of some of our uh, people that are out there in the what we call in the trenches, okay. in the fields, okay. doing the work. They're doing great advocacy work. Uh, we like had uh, her, Kathy Adams, our, our Virginia W. Harris was okay. one of our honorees, okay. and she is the national president of the National Coalition of 100 Black Women Incorporated. Okay. Um, and we we've had. Um, I can just go can go on and on naming some of the ones. Well, we have, it's, this is what it sounds like to me, and what I the point that I'm trying to make to my audience is that you all not only uh, look at the great work uh, from a legislative point of view, but you also look at community work. You also look at those pastors and those community servants yes. who uh, have done great work across the board. What kind of um, feedback, what are you all, evidently you all are getting it right. We're talking about the 25th year, the silver anniversary. What are some of the things over the years as far as feedback that has allowed you all to be around for so long? Well, the feedback has been, I think, because we see the advantage of helping our youth, okay. preparing them for the future, okay. and then also helping our senior citizens. Mm -hmm. And so the feedback that we have received over the years that people look forward to it because they can see the need for this. Exactly. They can see that as we mature, there's going to be continuous support that we can help. For an example, one of our um, senior citizen program that we've always assisted mm -hmm. has been the Bowden Center. Okay. I think many of you, you may be, you're familiar with the Bowden exactly. Center. Exactly. And so we, you know, one of the, they used to always have the red and white ball. Exactly. Once a year. And so we also helped with the funding of that. Not only did we help with the funding of that, we also 
served as hostesses. Okay. So we would serve as hostesses. Then our organization took part in going over, helping to decorate the Christmas tree. And so those kinds of things that the, we realized the need for that. And I think that's why the feedback that we've received is keep up the great work. Wow. Continue to be out there. Continue to help with um, the needs for our youth. I'll tell you another great example of, you know, we know, you know about the scholarship, but this is another program that our organization has partnered with churches. Okay. As you very well know, during the summer months, for those children that participate in the lunch program. Okay. So what we would do, if they participate in the federal lunch program, then when the school is out during the summer months, they, they do not have the, that support that helps them with the, the breakfast and the lunch. Okay. So churches would take, for an example, in a certain community, mm -hmm. the churches would take on a day. So our organization partnered with uh, Ben Hill United Methodist Church, and we provided funding to help get food to fix those lunches, and then the committee members like us, me, we would help go and deliver it to the different apartments. Oh, wow. All right, doing for they would to get that lunch. And it was amazing to me because I'm an educator to see the kids coming and waiting. When we would pull up, they would wait to come and get their lunch and they would be waiting for it. So we would, you know, we would take a day. Mm -hmm. like for an example, Ben Hill had a day. Cascade had a day. Bethel had a day. So you, when you look out and see what's going on and see what the needs are in the community, organizations such as ours should be able and willing to move forward, to step forward, to assist in that capacity. And so that's another reason why I think that we've been able to stay around for 25 years because of the work that we've done in the community. Well, I, I tell you this, what one thing that I've always admired about your organization is that you all really do have the village concept. Yes. Uh, a lot of people, when, when they talked to me about the Pinnacle Award and told me congratulations, a lot of them said, well, you know, they do stuff with the seniors in the high school. And then they said, another person said, they do stuff with the senior citizens in the community. <laughs> then another person said, oh, well, they provide lunches. And so you're educating me, but what was very interesting about my followers, when you all released who were the honorees, they were reaching out to me saying, oh my God, this is a great recognition, this organization helps the entire community. Mm -hmm. And so to, 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 to have an organization that understands the importance of the small children mm -hmm. and the seniors and our senior citizen population, and you all do it together, it cannot be an easy feat. So what I do wanna ask you before I let you go, what kind of information, let's say that I'm John Q. Public, and I want to be in the shadows of the Pinnacle Awards. I want to give back. I want to help. What advice or what would you tell someone that wants to take that village concept like you all have? I mean, you all, you're talking about 25 years. Mm -hmm. Just imagine if we had 10 other organizations celebrating 25 years, the impact that we would have. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't say it, but I'm going to say it. You all are the litmus of what it means to give back. Mm -hmm. And so what kind of information or advice would you give to our nonprofits that are just now starting out? I, I would say um, take a needs assessment. Look around your community and see what the needs are. You know, like you said, we always, we can't do enough for the two groups mm -hmm. that we are working with now. We can't do too much for our youth because our youth I can't say this enough, they are the future. So we have to prepare them because it just hurts me when I hear people say, oh, they just, they not, they just, they fight all the time or they say all these negative things. But I always believe in the positive. There's something positive that you can say about everything. And then, so I would say for, if you have, want to do something to help our community, to make our community better, look at 
what the needs are. Thank See you. how we can help our young girls and our young boys. See what you can do to help them. And then at the same time, let's make sure that we are looking at our senior citizens. Let's make sure that we are making sure that their needs are being met. We can, we can continue to look at, can we help them with um, re retirement planning? Mm -hmm. You know, as I look at another thing that our organization might want to do, because is let's come up with more advice because we've done things for uh, the senior citizens on retirement planning, how you do this, let's make sure you get your business in order. And there's so much work that we at nonprofits can do to help our communities and keep them informed on what's going on. And you know, as we continue to strengthen our community. That's what it's all about. We want to make them to be more informed and more uh, educated, but just help them to be able to know that this is, it's all of us working together. Well, I tell you, thank you for being so informative. I really want to say we need to pass the plate because that was a whole sermon you just <laughs> did. <laughs> but it's, it's truth, it's truth and it's inspiring. Uh, I am so, so honored once again to receive this Pinnacle Award. I know that you all have another 25 years <laughs> to be around and get the work done as well. And so thank you for coming and, and we're gonna make sure we get you back. Okay, and thank you so much for having us. We can't, we always excited to tell about the work that we are doing and hoping as you just said, that it will inspire other Nonprofits exactly. to get on board and let's work to strengthen our communities. Wonderful. And thank you so much. Thank and you, can't Michelle. wait to see you. I know. On and the what's 29th? that date again? The 29th. 29th. <laughs> we are real ready. I've been on the ho with the hotel today, and so we are ready. Okay. And we're looking to have, and I'm so excited about this. We are looking to be sold out over 400 people. Wow. Wonderful. So, right, right, we'll, right. we'll see you on the 29th. Okay. Coming up after the break, we look further into FECDC and shift our focus to their scholarship program, an initiative funded by the o awards luncheon. Stay tuned to hear how the FECDC is making a difference in the lives of students as well as the senior citizens in the metro area. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Mighty Six Conversations. Over the past five decades, the average cost of college tuition for undergraduate students has more than tripled. We've seen this surge in tuition costs and how it has led to significant decline in college enrollment. Today, we're excited to shine a spotlight on Pinnacle Scholarship Program. It is a remarkable opportunity that is reducing the financial burden for students in Metro Atlanta and making college more accessible. Today, we're honored to have Dr. Elizabeth Harris, a board member of the FEC, DC, and the Scholarship Committee Chair. Join us to provide insights about this incredible initiative. Uh, Dr. Harris, thank you for your dedication. Listen. You are what we need. You are that gateway for so many of our children that are trying to get to college. And for that, I thank you. Can you give a quick overview of the Pinnacle Scholarship Program and its mission? Absolutely, and thank you for the opportunity to be able to discuss about the scholarship uh, committee. I've been able to be the scholarship committee chair for the past two years now, and it's very exciting work. Our Scholarship committee, the way we look at uh, the scholarship applications is the fact that our mission is just like you said, to help make college a little bit more affordable for these students. And we have some dynamic students across the Metro Atlanta area that apply for these opportunities. And so what we're looking for with these students is a way just to help make college a little bit more affordable with the understanding the struggles that people have in our communities in order to pursue further education. 
Well, I, I tell you, having met some of the scholarship mm -hmm. recipients, I was so excited as to not only the diversity mm -hmm. of the scholarship recipients, but they were so excited. Uh, how? What is the? How, how do you go about choosing them? Uh, is it academic or need based? Can you just kind of give us an overview of that process? Sure. When we're looking at the scholarship um, application and putting it out there, we're looking for obviously uh, students that have academic excellence in addition to um, volunteerism. You know, what are you doing to help build your community? Because that is one of the uh, key pieces to that uh, scholarship uh, application is how has volunteering impacted your life and what are the things that you're looking to do to make a difference in the community once you achieve your higher education. You know, I think it's so important. Um, I talked earlier about the village concept, mm -hmm. and you all are just the poster child, so to speak, mm -hmm. of the village concept. Because what you're doing, you're setting the groundwork for individuals as they're going into their educational mm -hmm. part of their lives. They're understanding how important it is to give back through uh, volunteering. Um, I know this is your silver anniversary, 25 mm -hmm. years. That's a milestone. Uh, walk us into what your first scholarship recipient may have looked like versus your most current and how, how much it has changed. Wow, so I think the scholarship uh, program started in 2011 and one of our board members, uh, Lisa Johnson, she uh, came up with, uh, made a donation to come up with the first scholarship. So just having a scholarship of one person and then having to grow over the past few years and so now we're actually able to offer 13 students um, money to go to uh, college this year. So as far as the, the change of it, honestly, they're pro they're, a lot of the kids are the same. You know, it's wow. just different day and age. It's, they okay. may be doing a little bit more as far okay. as technological advances, but they're all great community leaders in their own right, in their own community. And then also um, demonstrating academic excellence in order to go to the next level. I think it's wonderful uh, that you all have set such a great program in place uh, can you speak to how the selection process is or maybe how stringent it may be for those that may be interested, you know, in the coming years? Maybe they want to make sure that they beef up their academics mm -hmm. or beef up their volunteer work. Can you kind of give them a, a, a road map a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, we have some dynamic students that apply, and it's unfortunate that we can't all give money to all of them. But you know, the key things are, like, as we stated, what are you doing as far as your volunteer um, work? Um, we've had some students that, you know, one student that's a recipient this year, she came up with her own uh, organization to be able to teach tennis in the community oh, to wow. underprivileged students. Um, so, uh, you know, we had another student that um, within her church, she's um, became a mentor to the young girls to make sure that um, they're being led in the right uh, direction. So, you know, that volunteer work is key. Obviously, academics, anytime you're a scholar, it you know shows that you have a commitment to uh, further and advancing your education. And also, um, we were excited this year as we had one scholarship uh, uh, family that donated uh, to highlight students that are from single parent homes. And so in, the, in demonstrating the challenges that they may have experienced and how their parent helped them learn about the commitment to excellence and overcoming those um, challenges that may be provided, that may occur uh, within being coming from a single parent home. So um, like I said, just different things, obviously, you know, so academic excellence, you know, volunteerism, and I think that's a lot of it. And even just kind of telling your personal story, you know, one of the things we may ask some of them, a personal challenge you had to overcome. You know, you had some students that may have had to deal with the challenge of a family member being ill. Um, some students may have had an illness themselves, but just showing that uh, fortitude and how they continue to rise despite certain situations that they may be experiencing. Well, I definitely appreciate what you all are doing. You all are the epitome of it takes a village. Um, I am so honored to, to showcase you today as well as being an honoree this year. What would you tell our listening audience, those that want to get, get involved, maybe donate, maybe want to find out more information? Mm -hmm. Uh, what information could you give them today? They can email me, um, Beth Harris, at 
scholarships at fecdc.com. And if they send me an email and just say, hey, we're looking to help or maybe um, sponsor a scholarship, um, I can provide them some information and get in contact with them in order um, for them to be a part of this in the future. Um, and just one of the things, you know, we actually had a, a former um, a Pinnacle of recipient, um, award recipient, um, Judge Ronald F um, Freeman and his wife Gwen, they were inspired once they attended the awards luncheon and created a scholarship um, to help um, young students that wanted to be in business or go into law. So a lot of our, um, over the past couple of years, some of our new scholarship that we've been able to offer have been um, created based off the fact they attended the luncheon wow. and were inspired and um, decided to um, donate money and um, be a part of the process. Well, I tell you, you have done a great job. Uh, you've inspired me. I would like to donate on behalf of Victoria Travis Jackson, which is my mother. Oh, wow. And Excellent. she gave so much to this community. And I've been trying to figure out what I can do to help. Absolutely. And so make sure, keep me honest. Yes, <laughs> yes. And make sure you reach out to me because I would like to fund one of those Oh, that is awesome. So thank you for being here today. Uh, the work of your organization definitely changed the lives of students and seniors. Um, well, that's all the time we have for today's episode of Mighty Six Conversations. I'm Vice Chair Khadija, guardian of your trust and one who appreciates the opportunity to serve in making sure that Fulton County government is working to meet your needs and concerns. Want to get in touch with our office? Connect with us online. Email me at khadija.abdur-rahman at fultoncountyga.gov or visit us at commissionerkhadija.com or like us on Facebook or follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter. And of course, you can always contact me and my staff at 404-612-8222. Until next time, stay safe and know that Vice Chair Commissioner Khadija and the Mighty Six team are working for you. Be blessed.